All right, so we're here once again on another Couch Coach Live happy hour. Man, last night was a fun, phenomenal happy hour that we did with Chris LeBron of the Off the Ball podcast. Today, I got my good friend Blake from the Global Dynasty Sports Hot Radio. He'll be joining us momentarily. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit of MLB. He's an avid Eagles fan and also a Brooklyn uh, Nets fan, so we'll get into that. We'll talk about his podcast and just his whole radio journey. Uh, he should be joining us momentarily. So we'll just get some church annou- announcements out of the way before Blake joins us on the on the happy hour here on the Couch Coach Live, the Instagram Live. Uh, follow us on social media, all your favorite social media platforms, Couch Coach Live. And hey, we have Blake coming here now. We're going to get him, join him in the fray. Let's get, let's see what we got here. So while we wait for what we got. Whoop did uh something go wrong here or what happened? I can, I can I can hear you, Blake. Um, oh you can, okay, all right, good deal. I can hear you. I can hear you, but I just can't see you. But all right, what is happening here? This is my first attempt here, my man. Hey, it's all good. I think I see you still. I can still hear you audibly. So, you know, we. Either, I, I know we. I'm getting like an error message, but that error message was more so like a, uh, you know, like a loading sign. But I mean, hey, we can we can ride with it. I, I think the the you know pick up momentarily, but we're definitely, um, you know, as long as I had the audio, we we good. All right, man. Sounds you, you good to me. Me, Blake? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. So, of course, I got uh, Blake of the Global Dynasty Sports Talk Radio podcast. What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, uh, I'm surviving, living the dream. How about you? Yeah, man. Same here, man. It's just, just enjoying the ride, man. Just you know, trying to stay uh, and do my you're, thing. You're, yeah, you're telling me with the. With the crazy world that we're dealing with right now, I mean, who knows what to expect in the next day, right? I know. I mean, it's it, it's literally a day by day process. Absolutely, hundred percent. Literally, and at, at this point, so I want to talk. You know, before we get into the, the crux of everything, I just want to talk about your your, your journey, just the, you know, the, the creation of the Global Dynasty Sports Talk podcast. Just anything in general, just what, what got you here, essentially. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So, uh, first off, I just want to say that it's incredibly interesting to be on this side of the interview. Normally, I'm the one doing the interviews, conducting the interviews, so it's quite interesting to me. Um, let's see how we started. We started five years ago. It'll be five years in July of this year. It happened uh, completely by accident. I was talking to a best friend of mine, and she we, we were talking. I can't remember if it was about sports specifically or if it was just in general. And she said, we need a platform for our opinions. And I said, you know what? That sounds like a great idea. And she just let me run with it. And from there, it snowballed into – what it is today, I had a logo created, an intro made up. I got our outro music is um, uh, local Minnesota bands. I I live in Mankato, Minnesota right now, and honestly, it's just it's always been well. Let let me back up a second. I have always been told that I'm an entertainer, that I have a booming projecting voice. And that I, I just people I see, I guess, seem to be. How do I put this? Um, get enjoyment out of what I do. And um, and when I started, I never meant to for it to even get to where it is today. And now I realize that radio broadcasting is my passion uh, in the next couple of months, once things open back up from the coronavirus pandemic, I'm hoping to return back to school, get a degree in radio broadcasting and communications, and make a career out of this. Absolutely, man. It's a very, it's 
it's it's it's a lucrative field, and man, it's it's you know. I mean, you have to tap in. Yeah, it's definitely something. Definitely is a, you know, so doing what you love to do. Absolutely, it, you know, not not to not to say anything about anyone's job or anything, but you know, certain people they go into a job and some people don't like it. They don't know how to, you know, get out or advance, or they they've been doing it for so long that they just stick with it. When you do something that you're passionate about, though. You get paid for what you love to do. So is it really a job in the end? That's how I look at it. You get paid for what you love to do, which is radio broadcasting for me. It's not a job. I get paid to do something I enjoy. That's the dream, man. Absolutely, man. I like, yeah, I mean, hey, they always say, you know, that's you know, that's a perfect example. Where, you know, when you look at it from that standpoint of hey, when you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. It that's a that's a quote right there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And one thing I really want to touch you on, you just because uh, generally with my podcast, we we generally talk more so of football, uh, NBA, other stories here and there, like major major stories. Sure, it's something that we really haven't touched on on our on our podcast necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely want to talk about this the MLB situation that's going on where. Um, you're seeing now where they're going to they're gonna try to start on July 1st, um, have 82-game regular season, and having this 50-50 uh, revenue split. And then, of course, the just the whole Blake Snell comments and what have you. Just your thoughts on just everything that's going on in uh, Major League Baseball from the actual the revenue split um, perspective, essentially. Sure. So I come at this from two different angles. I understand what Blake Snell is saying. I understand what the players are saying in general, where the players want to be prorated for the games that they play. You know, like with any of us in a job, you know, we all get paid for the days that we work. So uh, what is the current idea that they'll play maybe 80 games, maybe, give or take? And... Um, and so I do understand that they say, you know, pay us for the games, whatever that ends up being. But I do understand the owner's side of it, too, in two ways. That, you know, revenue is down because there are no games right now. So I do get that. So you say, so they say, you know, we can't, we can only do so much, even though there's no salary cap in baseball. So, I mean, the owners could take money out of their own pockets if they wanted to. But also, the owners aren't understanding that with the 50-50 split that they want. I mean, I could be wrong, but is that not the best revenue split in a major sport? I mean, even the NFL, which is the, which is the pinnacle sport that everybody loves in this country, it's what, 53-47? MLB is only asking for 50-50. That's an even split. So I do see both sides of the coin. Um, I don't think that Blake Snell honestly came across the way that he wanted to come across. I think he kind of put his foot in his mouth a couple of times, but I understand how when you get asked a certain question and you're not prepared for it, that that can happen. But I do understand both sides of it. And, and with the MLB saying, well, you guys signed uh, the, the MLBPA, rather, the Players Association, they apparently signed an agreement in March already. So I kind of go – you guys are kind of stuck. I mean, you signed it so legally. I don't know what recourse they have. Yeah, and that's another thing. It's, it's funny because it kind of equates to almost like like the um, with the NFL situation in general. Sometimes where you know these guys complain about these guys' salaries and what have you, but it's almost like you guys bargain for this. Absolutely. That's the point that I'm making is that the agreement that apparently came down in March, it's like, well, you guys didn't have to sign it, but you did. Okay, sure. So, uh, so honestly, right now, no matter what Blake Snell thinks, uh, I mean, I'm no lawyer by any chance. I'm a, I'm what somebody would call in the radio industry, a soundboard monkey. So I, I, I push buttons on a soundboard I talk into a microphone, and that's what I do. So I'm not a lawyer, but I think the players are in between a rock and a hard place right now. Yeah, 
I, I totally agree with that. And it is interesting when you think about it. And I think, and it's funny how you were saying, because I think, and it's weird, because I do side with like a Blake Snell in a sense where, like you said, I, I don't think he said it the way, you know, even he didn't articulate the way it should be. Right, that, that was my point. Right. Yeah, you're right. And, yeah, and the thing about that is, and I understand because everything that's going on now to complain about money, it just it just seems like it's just not, you know what I'm saying, like a lot of people are just not interested in those type of details. But in his same token, he has to look out for himself. So absolutely. absolutely. Because he's, in, in other words, so bad because he's almost, I want to say not, he's like public enemy number one for no for no essentially no apparent reason. Sure, I just think the timing of it—it it just sucks for him. Correct. He he's just trying to get his point across. However, however, whether it came across well or not, but I get his point. Everybody has to feed their families. I mean, if you look at not not to go too far off topic here, but if you look at you know. The, the job losses in America right now, what's it, 30-plus million people have lost their jobs? I still have a job, and I'm thankful for that. I was not one that has been hurt by this pandemic as much as, say, you know, my neighbor or, or Joe down the street or whatnot, and I sympathize with that. So I understand that. I think, uh, say not so more me, because I know how to articulate my words well being a broadcaster, but say the, the layman, the, the every the every man. I understand their point to say, what is Blake Snell talking about? Because he makes, you know, X amount of money. Not, not that you should be counting someone's pockets or anything like that, but I do understand that it's like you're complaining when I can't even scrape by to feed my family of two or three and my wife or girlfriend, whatever it is. So like I said, I do see the owner's perspective. I do see Blake Snell's perspective. But honestly, legally, I think the owners have the upper hand right now. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, and it's to a point where they're probably going to ultimately, I think out of all the team sports, in essence, I think they're the ones that are probably more conducive to coming back that would make probably more sense just due to the size of the team and actually just the whole playing where in essence we're we're in a world of what we call social distancing. Like no one is nearly like kind of bad. You know, they're nearly almost in a quote unquote on the island by themselves essentially. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean, be, what, yeah. or go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. And that's going to be, I think that's going to be interesting how that's going to play out and how, that that sport, in a sense, makes more sense for coming back as far as from a team perspective, you know, as far as a team sport. So it's going to be interesting how this is going to play out and, you know, is this going to be one of those things that could potentially, you know, you know, hurt or, you know, hamper, um, you know, the league, you know, you know, especially in the sense where you kind of want to have good PR at this point because I'm, in my personal opinion, I think this is going to be the only sport, team sport, that's going to, you know, actually – that's you know that's actually gonna gonna happen. Yeah. Let's see here. Comment here. A lot of fans look at pro sports as a public service rather than a business. Uh, yeah. And and that's kind of what I'm getting at is that you do have to look at it. it, it let me just say this. And for the first month of the pandemic, when everything shut down, I, I was okay. I mean, I and much like yourself, I'm dying for sports at this point. We do sports podcasting. We need stuff to cover. So so it's like I, I just I and that's why I'm grateful that NASCAR is coming back. Um I don't know if you've ever heard of this sport, but it's a form of rugby in Australia called Aussie Rules Football. That's coming back June first. I've been watching that for ten years. And so, I mean, I'll take anything. I've got a, a ticker up of uh, Bundesliga, the German soccer league, since they started today. I've got a ticker up on my computer next to me here. I'll, I'll just, I'll take anything. Absolutely. Give me professional ping pong for crying out loud. Just make the table longer and have it be six feet. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I was even watching cornhole the other day. I think there, we there you the game go. Last weekend. 
I watched it last week, and it was pretty interesting. I, I actually had a guy, cause, and it's funny because they had a guy, because I'm from uh, Richmond, Virginia, so it was a guy sure. from a neighboring city in Richmond. In, in, in Richmond. I'm like, I was rooting for that guy. The guy's from, uh, <laughs> sure, uh, sure. A city called McCainsville, Virginia, and I'm like, man, go, go, go. Like, you know, just, it just hype, just simple fact that it's a guy that lives in the same state as me that's playing yeah. cornhole. No, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> I, it, it's, fun, it's funny you mentioned cornhole. Uh, uh, I was at a, a birthday party last night, a 30th birthday celebration, and uh, my father just eked out a game of cornhole against me, 21-19. I was down 19-10. to 10. I came back mm. after he kept scratching. Uh, he just eked it out. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah. God, that's crazy. That's a, that's a hell of a comeback. <laughs> I think once I would have seen him at 19, I'm like, oh, I'm doing it. I tried. I, I scratch. I scratched on on a. Th I scratched on a three score right at the end. So that's how he won. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, and also, Blake is a fan of the Philadelphia Eagles. And my burgundy and gold heart is just like, uh, well, Blake. Let's talk about your Philadelphia Eagles. How uh, you can talk about, we'll talk about sure the thing. Draft. Uh, the draft, the schedule, anything that you're looking forward to in um, in the uh, 2020 NFL, well, 2020 season for the Eagles. Sure thing. Uh, so I'm a lifelong Philadelphia Eagles fan. Every team that I support was chosen at a young age. So I've always gotten crap in my school years of saying, your teams are all spread out. It's like, well, what do you? Okay, I'm sorry. I got to pick the home team once I turn 20. Now I'm going to stick with the teams that I've been cheering for my entire life. Um, okay, with the draft, <sighs> bring it, this brings back up the Jalen Hurts thing because I'm a Carson <laughs> Wentz guy. Oh, uh, I, I don't, I still am unsure about the draft. I, it started out poorly to me because, you know, we had to, I wanted Justin Jefferson out of LSU to start. He was on the board. We skipped him for Jalen Rieger and that's, that's fine. The thing about it is, is that now Jalen Rieger has to show up from day one. He can't be nudged along because of the situation with the wide receivers. Elshon Jeffrey, who I wish wasn't on the team anymore, but somehow he remains employed. Don't even get me started on that. Um, but the thing is, is that we need weapons around Carson Wentz. He, he, if he throws for 4,000 yards last year, to wide receivers who didn't have 500 yards. I mean, it's just – and Carson Wentz gets knocked at every turn. It just I, – I, it's unfair to me. I'm a defender of his. I will defend him until the day I die. He does have a Super Bowl ring, even though Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm actually wearing my Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl T-shirt right now. Unfortunately, you can't see it. Um but uh, some of the other picks that I do like, the Jalen Hurts thing still confuses me to this day because you have a quarterback that you signed for over $100 million in Carson Wentz. You draft Jalen Hurts. What is that supposed to do to Carson Wentz's confidence? You know, he, he's done the right PR moves and saying that it doesn't matter. I paid my money. I know my worth. But and so so you take use your second round pick on Jalen Hurts to be a gadget guy to start that makes no sense to me. And so they started out there, Devon Taylor in the third round, who I actually had the Eagles drafting in the third round, got that one right. The only problem is is that he's a project at linebacker, um, at linebacker in general for the year. There's two out of the three starting linebackers that only have 19 games under their belt. So we got a young core there. Got Darius Slay in the offseason, which I love. Needed that one. Needed that move for sure. I hope that Sidney Jones plays on the other side of Darius Slay. I think Darius Slay will really help Sidney Jones come along, I think Sidney Jones will be ready to make that jump, especially with the mentorship of Darius Slay. <laughs> I've always been a fan of Jalen Mills. I love his story. 
starting him at strong safety, I don't know if that's the right move. I kind of almost want to go into the season with my eyes closed on the first defensive snap because I'm not sure about that. Um, one player that I really, really like and I'm liking more from the draft, the more I read about him is Kayvon Wallace. He's being mentored by Brian Dawkins, my favorite football player of all time. Love Brian Dawkins. Troy Vincent as well, who's a Philadelphia Eagles legend in his own right. Honestly, if Mills isn't careful, I think Wallace could almost start from day one. I have friends that have called me crazy for that, but I'm like, okay. Now, now the, this group of friends... They do not give Jalen Mills any respect, any at all, less than none. And so I'm like, well, what's the alternative? If you don't respect Jalen Mills, why not give him a shot? I don't care if he hasn't played a practice snap. I don't care. Just whatever we have to do to make it work. Now, I'm always bullish on my team myself. Looking at the schedule, I gave us a couple of wins that we probably shouldn't get. I'm uh, in between 9 and 7 and topping out at 11 and 5 as of right now with a full healthy squad. Um, and, uh, Blake, so you, you, you did um... – so you all count. So you say you're gonna start the season on one against my beloved Washington Redskins, correct? Uh unfortunately, <laughs> my friend. Uh, I have a some kind of way. I have a sweeping the Redskins uh, rather oh, easily. Come on now. <laughs> but definitely, yeah. But hey, and but I'm, hey, and I'm glad I could, you I, I, I could be dead wrong, and you can come <laughs> back. Post a video doing a dance and making fun of me, and I'll, laugh and I'll applaud you. Yeah, and definitely, I'm glad you brought up Kayvon Wallace. Um, actually, he's from the area um, here in, in, in Richmond, Virginia. So definitely, um, oh, that's definitely very cool. Was, yeah, and I was, you know, actually you know, went to um, Howland Springs High School, a uh, neighboring um, high school, and I'm actually a, a proud alum of Howland Springs High School. So, oh, okay, you know, I'm definitely glad that you brought that up. And yeah, man, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to um, him being there. Even I'm you know, I'm having to see him twice a year, but hey, <laughs> long, long, long as he long as he the dreams fulfilled, hey, who cares? It's just right. Know, I, I mean, and the the things that I like about Kayvon Wallace are again being mentored by Dawkins and and Vincent that I mentioned. I mean that that alone is I mean is leaps of above what you could expect, and. From from the highlights that I saw at college of Wallace, I see so much of Brian Dawkins in him, just from his college tape, of how he pursues the ball, how he pursues the play, uh, how he pursues his mark of the player, how he hits, how he tackles, everything. I'm like, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'm like, I see a future Brian Dawkins. I'm trying to keep my expectations low but man i love the guy more and more the more i read the more i watch i'm 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 a fan and i'm a, i'm gonna back him the whole way yeah i will accept for two games <laughs> absolutely you're you're yeah. sitting there and you're like, oh, Wallace, great tackle. Oh wait, I'm a I'm a Washington fan. Yeah, right, right, uh, right. <laughs> wait, nobody heard that, right? No, nobody heard that. Right. It, it'll be eternal thoughts. It, yeah, it'll be, right, right. it'll be eternal thoughts. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, just like like I got Jeff uh, from the uh, Jeff B's up podcast. The Redskins are the Ohio State Eastern squad. So yeah, it's it's, it's a, a collection of Ohio State guys. So. so yeah. So if I, if I may toss a question back to you, uh, being the interviewer here uh, for, yeah. for a quick second, uh, what do you think about your uh, Washington team this year? Uh, and I say Washington because uh, on my yeah. podcast, my broadcast partner Taylor and I, we try to not use the team name just because. Yeah. This is one yeah. of those things, you know? I feel, yeah. And I, All right. Just, just so you follow where I'm going, I just – it's. What yeah, I try to do. 
And that's what I'm like too. Well, I'm, I've been very like balanced and fair and balanced with it because I know I really don't have a stance on it per se because I guess I'm too emotionally involved. But if people don't 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 want to use the term Redskin, I'm totally fine at this point. Call the Washington team; it don't matter. Uh, yeah, and and as a and as a here. fan. Oh, sorry, sorry, man. As a fan of the team, I do understand you using the moniker. I'm talking yeah. from, you know, looking at it from a distance versus being a fan. So I do understand. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's why I don't That's why I don't really get offended by it. And then, of course, I'm just too emotionally involved to even have a, a take on it. Hey, you and, me, just, you and me both. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, with this team, I think they're going in the right direction. Um, it's a situation where – it had to get worse before it got better. Sure. Uh, I think we just need to be patient. I think we are – the thing with the team, I we have a plan. And the thing is, and I just want us to be patient, I'm going to kind of look at this how, like, Carolina was. Carolina was just as bad as us in 2010. They got Ron Rivera. And I think it's going to be some – it was going to be some growing pains. And I think even, like, with Ron, Ron – um, when – um. Mm, my my brain went went gone for a second. So <laughs> Ron Rivera, he had growing pains. I think even up until like 2013, people were like, "Are we making the right decision? Is he the right man for the job?" He rode the ship, and I mean that's one thing I do like this team going forward. Um, defense, I love what we you know what we got on our defensive line. You got guys like you know Chase Young, who I think is a generational talent. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're, and I, I call I call ourselves like we're like the, the the mini San Francisco 49ers, where you look at what San Francisco's success of drafting the you know their um, their defensive line the like last four years in a row, where I think we're like you know doing those type of things where we're just you know just basically building it from the from the ground up, where you really need to show up your offense and defensive lines before you really get a lot of gap you know as far as stacking those before you get like your playmakers or what have you. Um on offense, it's gonna be it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be some stuff going on. I like Scott Turner being there. I'm hoping Scott Turner's gonna be there long term as far as on our OC and can help Dwayne Haskins. I think with Dwayne, Dwayne is a good quarterback. Dwayne with Dwayne's problem is upstairs. I think once he gets definitely the for sure of everything, he has the physical tools. He has the physical tools to do it. And he said, and, and I will even say this, and I, you know, and of course, he had two great games at the end, at the end of the season. I mean, he gets two playoff caliber teams, your team, the Philadelphia Eagles and uh, the Green Bay Packers. He had pretty good games in those. And even when he got hurt against the Giants game, that was a pretty good, he had a pretty good game. I forgot, I watched it. It's funny. I watched a game on NFL um, Red Zone. They had the Red Zone. And I looked at his stats, I'm like, Damn, he did have a pretty good game in that Giants game before, you know, of course, we got hurt in the third quarter. So I'm like, sky's the limit for him. And he just got to have a – and hopefully he got the guys like Scott Turner and all those guys to believe in him. And I think, you know, in our playmakers, I think we got some solid playmakers. Um, you know, of course, Terry McLuhan. Um, it's, I think that's going to be – you know, he's going to, you know, do his thing. And then we got the kid from Liberty. I, I, my mind blocks um, a blank for him, but – I mean, he's a hell of a receiver. Um, Adrian Peterson, I think he's just been – he's such a consummate leader. He's a guy I'm just like – I'm so impressed about. For a guy to be pretty much in the twilight of his career, you know, taking these losses and taking it in stride, he's – you know, he, 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 very, he has a very, like, strong type of, you know, leadership that we need going forward with this team. And I'm not trying to say we're going to win the NFC East 20, 2020, 2021. But to me, hey, we're in the right direction. Sure. And I think the biggest thing for Washington as a whole, as, as you mentioned before, is Ron Rivera. That was such a good get for you guys as far as just in just being pointed in the right direction. Now you just got to put it together. Yeah. Granted, I currently have my Philadelphia Eagles winning the East, but that's that's a whole nother. <laughs> yeah, hey, you you go you have a couple people that's going that uh, that team that got to start. They might have a little issue with it. Yeah, let, uh, let them have it. Let them have yeah, it. Yeah, I'm bullish on my team. I always am, but 
And I think my issue with this year is, you know, uh, when I predicted nine and seven to 11 and five, it's the young guys. It's the young wide receiving core. Miles Sanders as a running back who I absolutely love. I loved him in college. When we drafted him, uh, not this year, but last year, I about fell on the floor. I was so, I was so happy. But it's the young guys on defense because the defensive line is solid. The defensive line has always been solid. You got Brandon Graham. You got Malik Jackson, Fletcher Cox, and Javon Hargrove, who when we first got him, I had to look look up a little bit about him as far as, as – uh, as uh, 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 what is it, not stats, but uh, some of his background, and I watched some of his tape, and I was like, this guy next to Fletcher Cox? I was like, uh, uh, NFC East quarterbacks, look out. <laughs> Guy's going to eat you alive. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the main worry for me in the season is, is the – Young players on the team, I think Miles Sanders will take the next step in the right direction. Because even though he didn't have a hundred, or uh, excuse me, one thousand yards on the ground, he had thirteen hundred all purpose. So that's great in and of itself. I think we should lean more into Miles Sanders as he matures and as he gets better. I think that's a great move. And uh, the main thing is, as I mentioned, the young players, wide receivers, who knows what's going to happen there. Probably going to have to lean on our tight ends, uh, Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz, a little bit more than we're used to. And then the back end, other than Slay, as far as the defensive backs, that's a project. And we'll have to see what happens there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and and. So let's uh, switch a little focus here. We'll go to the <coughs> NBA. Sure thing. So Blake is a Brooklyn Nets fan. So your thoughts but, on the Nets. Uh, first, I want to kind of touch on the coaching situation. Uh, well, it was actually, I got out like Kenny Atkinson. Um, I'm a University of Richmond Spider fan. He's a Spider legend. I, well, I was heartbroken that he, you know, that he was let go. Just your thoughts on Kenny Atkinson. When I told you that I was typing up notes last night for this interview, that question came to my mind, and I told myself, I know it's coming, so I'm prepared for it. I still, to this day, can't wrap my head around it completely. has nothing to do with Jock Vaughn. has nothing to do with Kenny Atkinson. Here, I'm going to try and come at this as best I can and as down the middle as I can, and trying to figure it out. Kenny Atkinson is the coach. Kyrie Irving signs. Kevin Durant signs. Kevin Durant said, Kenny Atkinson's the coach that I want to play under. Okay? You're telling me in half a season that that all of a sudden changed? And, and it's my personal opinion that the stars of the team spoke up Kenny Atkinson took the, took the sword. He fell on his sword and said, I don't want to do this anymore. I want out. I think that was a cop-out to not place the spotlight on the star players. Now, all that said, having Irving, having Kevin Durant, obviously anybody would love that. Uh, just before I continue on, uh, who, who's your basketball team? I'm a Bulls fan. Okay, all right, all right, cool, cool. Uh, you've been having some rough years, but I won't get on you for that. I'll, I'll, I'll let yeah. you off the hook for that. <laughs> it's been rough. But, and, and see, and that's the thing. It, being a Bulls fan, if you, had, if you had Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, you'd be ecstatic. Anybody would be. And so it's – I'm getting frustrated just even thinking about it again. Kenny Atkinson coming in – improve the team every single year. You look at the win total, you look at the way the Nets played, and everything was improving year after year after year. I know sports, as well as, as you do, that it's what have you done for me lately? And we both get that. We understand. But you have to look at it from a deeper lens than that. You can't just look at it, uh, excuse me, as a general broad overview and say, oh, Kenny Atkinson, you're out. I just 
I, it's still a raw subject with me because I was a Kenny Atkinson fan because when we when this team start when Kenny Atkinson started with this team, we were nowhere. We we were the lowest of the low. We were the bottom of the league, and in a year and a half, he turned us into a playoff team. But yet, he doesn't get any of the credit for that. He just goes, "Oh, okay, Kenny Atkinson, you're out now." Jock Vaughn is in, who I don't think is going to be the next head coach. But it's it's frustrating. Absolutely. So, who do you think is going to be the head coach of um, of the Brooklyn Nets, I guess, in the 2020-2021 season? Hey, I got my video going. There we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Sorry, I was I was trying to pull up uh, my coaching list of my candidates that I wanted. Oh, okay. I thought the I thought the video would just go into into picture in picture, and I could still hear oh, you. But once okay. I minimized yeah, yeah, yeah. it, okay. it closed me out, so I quickly was getting it back there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so sorry. So what you just said, uh, repeat it for me. So, yeah. So who, your wish list. Who should be the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets next season? Okay. Do you want me to go pie in the sky, or do you want me to go realistic? Well, pie in the sky, I'm going to put it this way. Whoever's <laughs> available. I, I know there's some guys who are pie in the sky that are under contract. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, excuse me. For me – because I, I have a list uh, on a, a notepad on my phone of a couple of names, guys like Eric Spolstra, Greg Popovich, Terry Stotts of the Trailblazers. Um, there's a couple of college coaches, Jay Wright out of Villanova. Um, Patrick Ewing out of Georgetown intrigues me. Um, but as far as who could actually be because who who's available right now nobody really you know kind of lights my fire basically at, as far as right now but i will say this no matter who i want i it's not going to be some run of the mill you know coach who doesn't have a lot of experience doesn't have experience coaching star players because again as i mentioned Kyrie and Kevin Durant, in my personal opinion, are the reason for Kenny Atkinson's ouster. So I think they're going to need someone like Stotts or a Popovich or a Spolstra, somebody who's been there and done that. Spolstra won a title with LeBron James. Greg Popovich has won countless titles with Tony Parker and Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili and David Robinson. And so, and and the Trailblazers are always in the thick of things with C.J. McCollum and uh, their other wing players uh, escaping me right now. I can't, I can't think of his name right now. So, 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 no matter who it is, it's gonna be, it's gonna be, have to be a name. It can't be, and as I mentioned, Jay Wright and Patrick Ewing. That's just me thinking of ideas. It's not going to be an NCAA coach. I know that. So no matter who I want, it's going to be somebody with a name that knows how to handle star personalities, especially Kyrie Irving, who uh, is a flat earther, and among other things. <laughs> but yeah. But as far as the or, – I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you uh, as far as the team goes, I mean, th there, there's been rumors for a couple of months now of doing a package deal for a third star. You know, you have Irving, you have Durant, you trade. Let's see here. Let me look at the depth chart. Um, probably quite a bit of this. Jared Allen out of Texas. I've always been a Jared Allen fan. I'm, I'm one of his biggest fans. Jock Vaughn becomes the coach. All of a sudden, DeAndre Jordan's in the starting lineup, and I just go, oh, my, I can't take it. 
Jared Allen averages a double double. He's 22 years old. How do you not get again irritation? And yet they're thinking, oh, let's trade Jared Allen for a star player. Trade anybody else but Jared Allen. That's my opinion. I mean, I, I like Karis LeVert, Joe Harris. I, I enjoy him as well. The Nets do need a power forward option. Now, with Joe Harris playing the three, small forward, I kind of have but was thinking about this last night, preparing for the interview, Joe Harris at the three, maybe when Kevin Durant's healthy, maybe deploy him at the four, maybe a little bit, because the starter right now is Wilson Chandler. Not to knock the guy, but, I mean, he's not – I mean, so if we were to do something, I would like maybe to get a – you know, for another star player, I would like to get maybe a power forward in there. It probably would take Spencer Dinwiddie, who I'm a big fan of as well. I was a big fan of him when he first showed up, uh, when he was doing the 10-day contracts and he got his full-time contract. I was a big fan back then. It would it would suck to see him go, but Karis LeVert and Dinwiddie, I'll take them over Jared Allen. I don't want to lose Jared Allen yet. I love the fro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes indeed. Yeah, and I like I like I like Jared Allen. Like you said, the youth. Like he's a guy, guy that he could be the guy after Durant and um and KD leaves. Cuz when you sit down and think about it, he yeah, he may be. He may be thirty before they leave. Yeah, I again, it's it, it's, and I understand the logic. You know, it's you, you go. So I, I was a fan uh, from a young age of the New Jersey Nets. Yes. You know, he, my friends give me crap about it. I went through the nine win season. In that year, I didn't even check box scores anymore. I just go. I know the team lost. I, just alleviate my misery a little bit. I just, I can't handle it. My heart can't handle it. And they move to Brooklyn and, you know, everything's on the upswing. It's just, let's not, you know, blow it up for a perfect example. I don't want another Ke uh, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce move. Yes, I, don't. my heart can't handle that of not having first-round picks for, like, eight years. I'm 30 years old now. I just – I'm getting worried now. I, I'm getting worried now because the offseason is going to hit me, and I'm going to be like, oh, what happened in the newswire? Oh, okay, nothing happened. Okay, good. Right. Oh, wait, what happened? Oh, okay, nothing happened. Ah, uh, yikes. Yeah. <laughs> so with the, with the team, though, I think especially playing in the East, too, I think helps because the East is the yeah. uh, the lesser of the two conferences, obviously. But I just, I'm just saying let's keep building bit by bit. Let's not just, you know, you know, just throw a dart at the dartboard and see where it lands. I just – we did that with Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. I – we're smarter than that, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, so let's put a bow on this uh, happy hour that we have here. So, Blake, where can they find you on social media? Absolutely. Uh, so you can find our podcast on iTunes. Uh, I don't have a dedicated URL for the iTunes, so all you would have to do is search Global Dynasty. It'll pop up in the uh, podcast section uh, down below on iTunes. On SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash Global Dynasty STR. On Facebook, facebook.com slash Global Dynasty STR. Same thing as the SoundCloud, but obviously on Facebook, facebook.com slash Global Dynasty STR. Uh, everybody that watches this, uh, go give the podcast a like and keep following uh, my man Chris here. Yeah, man. Chris well, knows definitely. what's up. He, he's he's got to go. Absolutely, and Chris, before man. we get going, yes, man, sir. I got yes, to say something to you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, I enjoyed doing this. And um, not for nothing, I would love to have you on my podcast as well sometime. Are you in? I'm in, man. You know me. I'm all in.
All right. All right, man. All right, man. And like I said, I I appreciate you doing this, allowing me to promote the podcast a little bit. And uh, let's keep doing what we're doing and take over the airwaves by storm. Yes, because content is king. Definitely appreciate you for coming coming through today, Blake. Truly appreciate it. Get this man a follow. Global Dynasty Sports Talk Podcast, man. I appreciate you for coming through, man. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. All right. Take care, Blake. All right. Catch you later. Bye. All right.